We back, we back, we back, we back, we back, we back, we back. <laughs> hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hey Shooter Podcast, where we talk about your journey to the sun. I am your host, Sanate, and on this episode, I'm joined by Dean Clare, CD, and Debello, and we'll be talking about our experiences in boarding school, focusing on one of the biggest elephants in the room, racism. So now, since it's quite a heavy topic, we'll be running it over two episodes. I hope you enjoy this. This is The Boarding House, part one. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Hey Shooter Podcast, where we talk about your journey to the sun. I'm your host, Sanati, and I'm joined by Dean Clef. Hi. Tibello. Hey. And TD. Are you going by TD or Chi today? I don't know. Yeah. TD. TD, baby. Baby. I don't know. TD. T. Okay. How are you guys doing? Yeah. I'm actually a little traumatized, guys, about thingies um passing. Chadwick. I'm sorry to start on such a oh, I, I mean, just go into it. Hmm. You no, know, but I am fucking traumatized. Like what the hell is going on? How are you gonna wake up dead? That's the reality. That's the reality of the world we live in, hey? And yes. I don't but how know. has he kept it for so long? I'm so unprepared. Yes, okay. and how has he pulled it off? Mm-hmm. And I think also he his literally family allowing, allowing, yeah, I think his family allowing it, him to work so hard all these four years, knowing he's that sick, like, mm. <laughs> But I mean, also, yeah. if you don't do what you love in your last few days, then what else should yeah. you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel though like profoundly just he was just so like the fact that he just managed to pull it off and just seem like invincible and just strong and and then he just had no idea. And then you yeah, don't yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then I think the other thing that hurt people is that he he made such such big strides for black actors in Hollywood and him having say people like Daniel as a mentor to to chart the way for him and for him to have you know followed that path and then all of a sudden it was just cut so short after like a couple of incremental movies like Black Panther and such and everyone I think is hurt by the fact that once the ball was rolling that one person is now just you know they've, they've fallen off the face of the earth yeah. And it's like, okay, now who's going to take the on from here on to, to continue this? Have you guys seen um, Family Feud SA? I think it's on Netflix. Have you guys watched it? Mm-hmm. Have we watched what? Family? Family Feud, South Africa. Nanny? Oh, no. So you know Family Feud uh, America? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> South African one on Netflix. Oh, uh-huh. and it's it's also hosted uh-huh. by um, Mr. Harvey. What's his name again? Steve Harvey. Yeah. Oh, oh. Mr. Harvey. Mr. Harvey. <laughs> yes, Mr. Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> so old, man. Respectful like that. Hey. <laughs> Anyways, so watching it, guys. <laughs> it's amazing. I feel like I need to be on that show. Mm-hmm. It's amazing because. Like you know, with the South with the American one, they mm-hmm. ask random people random questions, and then they give the answers, yeah. and you have to guess mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. the people on the street basically said. So on this one episode, they were asking like, "What was your what was the worst subject you had in high school?" And people like mathematics, you know, science, all of that, and then someone said life orientation, which was actually on the wall. It was such a culture shock, yeah, because he was like, "You're already here." Why do you need to be oriented, Hore? How to live your life? Yeah. Yeah, and it got me thinking. Hey, but I, did, I did not know in high school. Did you guys do that? I did because I went to a Model C South African school. So yeah. I think initially, probably when they came across or they introduced Elo into the uh, educational system, it was probably supposed to be more things like 
the one, I think what we want or what we feel we were robbed of is how do investments work? Um, how do you buy a house? Or um, if you're going for a job, what should you look out for? I think everything that you sort of learn in life, we should have had that sort of um, knowledge in high school, but no one prepares you. There you go into your fresh grad. You don't know what uh, a credit score is. You don't know how to purchase a car. You don't know how to purchase a house. You don't know things about soft skills when you join an organization. Like no one teaches you that or things such as you'll find out that say your white classmates have been working since they were in high school, whether it was at a store or a coffee store. And those are things that they already are adding to their CV to show leadership skills or having positions or roles of responsibility or knowing how to de uh, delegate tasks. And no one ever, like will ever sit you down to say, these are the things you should be doing at this time. And therefore, now you are applying for your first job out of college and they're like, you have no experience. And you're like, okay, but this is why I'm here. And they say, you haven't even, you know, say done an internship and whatnot. So those, just, those that lack or gap in information in sort of things about just general life that you should have been told before wasn't there. And I think that's what Elo should have necessarily been uh, other than telling us about, let's say like dumb stuff, like, um, like I feel like information that's already on the internet about say um, sexual health or um, it's, it's not something you should be dedicating school time to. Yeah, teach me yeah. how to you know navigate life practically yeah you know what i'd like to actually add on that mm -hmm. i actually feel like um not necessarily to disagree but i think we actually need more mostly for men mm -hmm. just because it's a it's it's a big problem down here and really everywhere else in the world but i think there needs to be time taken in teaching Besides those like tax skills and stuff, but more a class for men to teach them how to yeah. fucking act. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was just my two cents there. So did you guys have L O um T and T V? Yeah. Oh okay. I, Wait. I, definitely... I hello. <laughs> Where did you have it? Uh in KZN. Remember I went to school there. Oh, like... oh snap. <laughs> Yes, but then we hadn't even gotten to anything that was substantial that I could say that I learned from. Like at that beginning stage, it was just like something to fill in the gaps in terms of classes. So I, I don't think I took anything from it in those two years. We were, so I mean, yeah, I didn't really gain anything from my LO classes. Yeah. At all. So I, I share the same sentiments. Like for me, it was it was like an extra yeah. like pre class. Like we did group work. We were doing like exercising. Yeah. The thing I remember that they taught us was yeah. This, I think it's the seven stages of grief. It was yes. Yeah. Yes. it was just bad. That was one uh, yeah. Yes. Well, important class. Yeah. It just sounds like maybe they're not. Because obviously, like times are changing and whatnot, and problems are changing them. They're making it more about whatever problems we're facing now. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, I never, I didn't experience life orientation. But what I do remember, I went to a Montessori when I was young, <clears throat> and though it was, it's very like practical. Um, the only memory I have though is teaching me how to make tea and that's about it <laughs> but otherwise like we were taught how to like little basic skills as kids mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do think like those types of things are really important and even just with kids uh, like I recently did this um, assignment on I don't know you guys know we work mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. so although they're like in shambles now but otherwise like they had this concept of um we grow which is a school and it's it's basically so the core of we work is about community and like elevating the world's consciousness um so they had these schools where they teach kids about like entrepreneurial skills and things like that so i feel like those classes should maybe be just transformed in a way that like serves us 
more. And yeah. you know, I'm not wanting I'm to protect. It's just probably I'm I'm experiencing certain things that my neighbor is not experiencing and stations. Whereas you need to be aware of certain differences and see how you can contribute towards, you know, making the two worlds meet halfway and gel together in a productive, respectful, meaningful way. And those are just the things we never picked up on as we were growing up. I, th I think also uh, the generation uh, after us, I think they call them, is it Gen Z? Yeah. Or where, where basically they're the ones who are more proactive in social issues. And, and they are more vocal. And in as much as, as they're, they're doing their part, I feel like the educational system worldwide should meet that because it shouldn't be a matter of I got this information from the internet that's mm -hmm. why I know how to talk about systemic racism it should yeah. be something that should be incorporated in the in in, in the syllabus like the Bello was saying earlier that um the entire syllabus just has to be overhauled and updated to reflect the issues that we are currently facing today because if you are still teaching me the same math the same English the same geography from 50 years ago what am i supposed to do with it today yeah. you're not teaching me coding yeah. you're teaching me yeah. entrepreneurial skills you're not teaching me how to start a company you're not teaching me how to network you're not like and you think to yourself we come out of this outdated system and then we're supposed to sort of out of the blue function in this new world and then people say oh no yeah you're lazy or oh no you should have done this no one t tells you what to do at what time so if you don't take the initiative on yourself to find out everything that you're supposed to know by whatever age you're going to find yourself lagging behind mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and on that note um i wanted us to talk about the whole racism the huge racism issue that's in schools you know um whether it's in south africa or internationally i just wanted to know mm -hmm. your experiences because yo I, I i come from a hella racist yeah. school <laughs> yeah yeah so what, Harry, you know you can go for days speaking about this because just and the crazy thing is that when i'll speak for myself when i started mm -hmm. high school or high school when i went to boarding school mm -hmm. i had no idea that this is actually this is meant do you know what I'm saying? This mm -hmm. is only something that I just started realizing as I was older. And I was like, no, man, but those things were wrong. And it right. even starts off from such a small, small scale, like even just the timetable, for example. I was thinking about this, that, you know, I remember wake up time was 6 a.m. and breakfast was at 6.15. And when I first got there, I was like, okay, so when do we shower, you know, like, in, and I come to find out that, like, no you have 15 minutes and by the time you're done brushing your teeth making your bed mm. it's time to be downstairs for breakfast and then you realize that we actually were not included in, in in that schedule because for us black people predominantly we know why shapa was saying like mm. this is what we do like we grew up showering in the morning and then you get to these schools and then you realize you're not even included in into the shower so baby if you want to shower you're gonna have to wake yourself up before even the alarm goes off and this is just this tiniest tiniest thing because that's what they do even we had to just adjust and be like this is normal only afterwards i was like actually what i've been doing for the past like two years mm -hmm. that, that's not it that's not how i grew up that's not who i am and mm -hmm. actually it just has a whole lot more to do than just trying to you know save time and get us into school earlier or mm -hmm. whatever because i mean they could have given us 30 minutes yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somewhat of a difference. Mm. You know, they were just like fifteen minutes, here you go, brush your teeth. Like and you like why are you not showering in the morning? Like Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why do you and like okay? St. Anne's is like a really good school, right? Yeah. Mm. Have, and you guys pay off a, a shit ton of money. A lot. A lot. Yes, yes. Uh, so Jobs went to Kersney, which I think is not too far off from where you were, yeah? Mm -hmm. And he has a similar story about how they would be in a shower and literally they'd be alternating, like one dude and that, uh, and then next the other guy. And mm. then who weren't paying so much money for you to money. be living a life, living a life of squalor. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is true. I mean, like the shower thing, it never really used to be like that. But yeah, I just, you know, just shower time was never an enjoyable time. Mm. It just quick, it was fast. It was just, you never, but I mean, I also guess boarding schools throughout the board, like black, white, whatever, it's actually just not an enjoyable place. To yeah. Be. <laughs> they make it hard for you. But why do they, I think, I think, Another important thing is to ask ourselves why that is the situation. Like, so, okay, if these dudes, these black guys are showering in such a way, is this also like maybe some kind of sy- systematic or systemic, whatever, mm-hmm. um, way to just remind or have you come into that mind? Okay, so I just like to look deeper and like is it actually intentional because mm. why aren't the other guys experiencing it are you supposed to be reminded of the fact that you are here to suffer mm. and we are you know we're the kings yeah, yeah. The and you know, like they want yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Weird. Kind of they, they want to remind you when you don't belong here mm. yeah, which mm. is weird because this is your continent and your country and your home yeah yeah. Mm. the tactics are funky but we see them though we, we do see it. we do and yeah. this is something that we would bring up when i was in high school um like okay let me <laughs> let me just paint out what our high school was like <laughs> ne? so we had an <laughs> english <laughs> english medium uh-huh. and afrikaans medium yeah so each grade there was a grade there was a grade 8a and a grade 8e and their explanation was that the A class is taught in Afrikaans and then the E class is taught in English. But now when you get to grade 10 and you start choosing subjects, everyone goes into the same class. Ne? But now another thing is because we did not have any black teachers there, most of the lecture will be in Afrikaans. And Sinatya from Lesotho has never done Afrikaans before in her life. Now I'm doing Viskanda, which is maths in Afrikaans. I'm doing, and, and that's the reason why I even stopped physical science. Because Afrikaans words are so long. Imagine learning. In English, it's tough. My, dude, <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> now I'm there, I'm like, hey. I was like, nah. <laughs> you can't I you can't do this. Gone into, I don't know, chemistry or, you know, physical sciences, but now that mm. barrier. Yeah, so I had to drop it. I was like, if I if I want to do well in school, I'm not going to win here. I went and got like IT because then the class there, the teach I think it was only black people in IT. And she was really cool. So, so she teaches in English. So I think that's where the, the lights should have gone off, say for my parents or for somebody that knew better. But we were all like, ah, it's education, it's whatever. Moving on to the hostel, ne? The hostel... The Afrikaans girls had a different entrance to our entrance. Entrance? Hold, hold. <laughs> <laughs> My niggas. Wait, what? I don't understand what you just said. Wait, right what? Now. I'm going to have to... <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Listen. <laughs> ne- this hostel, this hostel had like... Wait, what's the basis of this decision? This decision, oh, this one, like, and this one, um, I think, because when I got to grade eight, there was only maybe two Afrikaans girls in a hostel of like 70 girls. So majority were black mm. and they had their own room, you know, and then we day scholars, all of the Afrikaans people at, at your school, most of them were day scholars. Uh, okay. And then a few were boarders, but like, yeah, mm. coming from like nearby towns and, and some did live in, cause it was, it's in Seneca. Some did live in the, in Seneca, mm. but the parents felt it was best that they stay in the boarding house. So they had different entrances, and we didn't Wait, care. Two girls. Yes, <laughs> because oh, <laughs> because it was closer. It was closest to one of the matrons' house. So I think for a long time I just assumed ah they're probably staying with the matron or whatever. But then <laughs> it, shit started to get creepy when their bathroom was renovated, and now this ties into what Let you guys were saying. <laughs> Honestly, it ties in with what you guys were saying. Okay, are these were we supposed to suffer? Like, what's the story behind that? So their bathrooms got renovated. They got like new bathtubs and the showers. Even our boards, I were like, what about us? They're like, and the principal was like, no, their parents put money together to renovate their bathrooms. I'm like, nigga, you don't know our parents' pockets. Why did they ask your parents? 
You know, said you can't, can't put money down for that. Dude, that time we we're sharing showers. We had to, we had to, we had a list of okay, who goes into the shower on which day, and it has to be five minutes. Uh, the prefect on duty has to be timing to be like, yo, Sinat, it's been five minutes. Also, you go into the shower two by two. That's how hectic it was. So, like, from things like that, like, there were always, like, you know, signs to be like, this is not right. And when we asked them, they'd give us, like, half-ass answers. Mm. This mm. went on to, like, oh school socials. We had, say, for Soki. So, where Soki is basically, like, a disco night. We had a disco night for the English medium and we had one for the Afrikaans medium. We had a Valentine's no. Day ball, Valentine's no. ball for the English medium and a Valentine's Day ball for the Afrikaans medium. The only I so I promise you the only social event we had together was what we what they called sports day. So that that was when um, people that played sports they were celebrated. That was the only time we ever came together. And I think around grade 10 grade 11 that's when now you know i was thinking like ah, ah this is not right we went again asked the principal and he was like no it's because we have different tastes in music so it's best we just keep the two you know separate and respect each other's cultures and i'm like but what do you mean this should be a chance for us to learn from one another guys no <laughs> i'm shook it was crazy it was crazy and even the one time that um, there was a rela- there was like a relationship. This black guy, he was dating this Afrikaans girl. I feel like I remember the story a little bit from Devo. Just like hey. it sounds a little familiar. Guys, it was a big case, a big hoo ha in the whole town. They were called into the office because the whole town was was not comfortable with this. And one of the teachers in our class, in EMS, EMS was economics something something. The EMS class. She was like, no, but imagine a spring, if a springbok and a dog came together. We lost it. My guy, we were in grade nine and we were like, no. I was like, no. I had, nev- I had never experienced like apartheid or anything like that because I'm from Lesotho. But yeah. I was like, that is not right. What do you mean? Because in this, in this analogy, clearly the black person is the dog. I was like, no. Oh, my God. Guys. And this is a school that is, it's praised, you know. (laughs) No, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, And I think the one, the one thing, like we we, we did, we did like try fight the system and question them and be like, but why is this like this? Why is that like this? And the teachers would say stuff like, you know, um, it was only up until, say, 40, 50 years ago that no actually less than 50 maybe 30 years before i went that they allowed black people to come you know attend school there so we should be grateful that we are the chosen blacks that are you know being blessed with education from this institution and it's just like mm -mm. what about right now is it still like that right now at the school do you Mm. think or do you have you heard of any positive strides the last time the last time i checked was when because I was in, I was there 2005 until 2009. Mm. So a girl that went there from 20, I think from 2010 or 11, she matriculated maybe 20, uh, my math, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> 2017 and a more, she probably started 2012, whatever. But she, yeah, she finished school in 2017. And when I talked to her, she was like, shit was still the same. It was still yeah. the same separation. And it was still as hectic. And when I went back last year, because we were driving past um, with my sister last year, we were shocked to find out that there's only about, I think, 20 girls now in a hostel that used to take 70 girls. So now each person has her own room. So I don't, I don't really know what it's like now, but it's still very much grade 8A, grade 8E type of thing. I'm not sure about the hostel living situation. Yeah. This is so insane. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it, it kind of reminds me, I was thinking earlier on today about how, you know, the U.S. right now is, like, in uproar. Like, mm. granted, like, rightfully so. And it just made me think of our people and how we just actually don't know how to mobilize ourselves and use our voices for positive change. Mm-hmm. Because we, like, for example, 
I don't think that's something like this could have happened in a school in the U.S. where you're using separate entrances. Mm-hmm. They would have been like, oh, hell no. 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 Yes. Oh, hell you know. mm-hmm. As we just, we see these things and, you know, we sort of just take it lying down and only later you're like, damn, I sh-. it's kind of like when you're in a fight and then only like three hours later, you're like, man, should've, I should have said this. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah. we just take we take we take the shit guys mm. we really take the shit and it's disappointing it really but, is and if you do that even amongst us ourselves as like black people like mm. if you think of just say Lesotho and South Africa like looking mm-hmm. at the, the state of politics like we're all disgruntled by everything going on no one's actually really saying okay I'm actually going to do something about it or I'm going to mobilize or I'm going to mm. be all just you know, rolling by. So mm. I think to myself, if we can accept that that sort of attitude or behavior from people that look like us, who are we to then stand up to, against white people and, and organizations that have been there since the beginning of time? Mm. Mm. That's the same attitude. Their system is so hectic. It is so incredibly, like, even from, like, the most thing like tr- things that you think that are super trivial like from your filters on instagram mm-hmm. the system is just so entrenched and so deep mm-hmm. like the shower situation mm-hmm. it's so like it's so basic yeah. and they're not getting that. it's not actually even mm-hmm. just south africa mm-hmm. um because so i i lived in namibia for like five years and I went to Wintook International School, mm-hmm. um, but Wintook International School didn't have a boarding house, so I had to st- I had to stay at DHPS, which was actually Deha whatever. It's mm-hmm. German, basically. Okay. Yeah. And they even they also had a similar system where um, black people were whatever, and white people were I guess privileged mm. the way that the world actually works, mm. and. The thing for me is that I never actually directly experienced the racism, and I'm guessing for reasons of being light skinned, I don't know. But I would see my so just like a little bit of background. Uh, my dad is Canadian and my mom Gimosut. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I've always grown up as a Musut yeah. rather than Canadian. Mm. And I would witness for me, I never actually directly would uh, experience the racism, but I would see my mom and my sister experience it, and I think. That actually made me even more angrier mm. than if it was me directly. So, because like obviously, like you don't want that. People. People are like, why? You know what I mean? Like, mm. I would, I was actually such an angry little kid mm. because racism is also so bad in Namibia. Also, like, and I'm guessing just places like even what Zim, where you know, there's been like the white establishment mm. of power or whatever those different places and it's not just South Africa mm. so it, it's just crazy that it's so real and it's it, 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 you know so yeah 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 no with me uh, with my high school experience I think it's similar to Sinati and TDs in that it, it's just the little differences that you see over time and you reflect on it and you think to yourself Wow, really? Mm. <laughs> For me, I remember things such as um, sports. You think to yourself, people that are selected for first team tennis, first team hockey, have mm. been playing this since they were three years old. Yeah. And now you arrive there from Lesotho in grade eight, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to participate to just, you know, throw yourself into everything and just sort of catch up adjust and acclimate to everything that's going on Mm -hmm. and you realize that okay even if i were to try and i don't play hockey or tennis or swimming or whatever the case may be Mm -hmm. all those sports um you find out people already playing at like pro national level yeah they have colors on their blazers Mm -hmm. if you don't have colors and you can't all of a sudden be a prefect or if you don't have colors, you're not eligible to be mm. um, the head school girl or head of hostel and whatnot. And you think to yourself, obviously, if if freaking Jessica has been playing this from four years old, she's been through this entire system. She's been playing first team her mm. whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easier for her to 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 break those barriers of um, getting leadership positions in in school 
which now uh, are good, um, I don't know, like impression on her college applications. Mm. I remember we had this one incident in which where this one girl, long story short, she was going, her plan was to study uh, law in Stellenbosch. And so obviously like your English marks has to have to be really good. For some reason, we all had, let's say, you know, um, pop quizzes and tests throughout the, the entire year. She'd always get like 70s, 80s, but the class average like 60 because that's sort yeah. of the, the level of difficulty. And everyone would be like, but we Ow. sort of had the same answers and, mm. and everything. Only to find out that the principal, who was also the, the English teacher, was, was, you know, personal friends with her parents. Her parents are the ones that donate uh, the kids oh, school God. for first team hockey. Her mm-hmm. parents are the ones that own, you know, some... Um, resort of that 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 uh donates to the school her parents are the ones that you know set up certain charity organizations they sponsor certain events and all of that and you think to yourself oh it all makes sense mm. why this works that way things exactly. that you know uh, a black kid would never get away with say um i remember another incident was um Say all the hostel prefects have to commit a certain time during the weekend mm-hmm. to to be on duty, right? Say it's, so it's, a, it's, a, it's rotating, right? Um, the white kids would always, for some reason, want to bribe the black girls, knowing that okay, you're a term board and you're not going to go home anytime soon. I want to go to play for the weekend with my boyfriend or my friends and my group of friends. So do you mind swapping this weekend? with me mm-hmm. or you find out that you do like you do a double shift and they'll be like oh no i couldn't be on duty this weekend because um my mm-hmm. aunt is getting married so i have to swap for another weekend and then when it's time to pay up it's like oh no i have something else and, yeah. and exactly it's just it's just the tiniest of thing or like um right now if 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 it's um time even you also have the same uh shower situation where in the morning the bell rings at 6 a.m. By 20 past, you're supposed to be downstairs in line waiting to go into the dining hall. Your uniform is supposed to be clean, ironed, white mm-hmm. shirts, polished shoes. Your hair is supposed to be neat. And you're thinking to yourself, I literally had all but five minutes to get into the shower, chop mm. the whole body, put on lotion, dry, get dressed, everything, and be downstairs by the time mm. it's like breakfast time and you have to sit in all of a sudden like be at school by like 7 30 and all of that <laughs> but the worst part for us was you weren't even allowed to wake up earlier it, yes it, get into trouble you had to sneak <laughs> around Did they want you? I was like, yes dude it makes no sense <laughs> hey guys <laughs> i think i need more time and they'll be like no you are not allowed to get out your room yeah. Up until the morning bell rings, and yeah. you yourself, well, if there are thirty of us this morning, yeah. we need to shower. And exactly. Everyone takes five minutes max. Mm. Obviously, uh, we need more time than than freaking twenty minutes. Like you mm. can't squeeze in mm. thirty people in four people. showers over twenty minutes. Like, what am yeah. I doing? Like, just you know, rinsing myself. Then I'm supposed to go to school. Just yeah. Like, what is that? It that's so yeah. depressing. I can't even stand one of those showers where, like, literally my shower is what makes my day. Mm. If, yeah. Or, you know those showers where it's like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I actually want to cry. Yeah, I'd actually rather not at I'm that like, stage. I'm yeah. going to go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, like, Basically, yeah, for us, if, if you were waking up early, you knew you had to go to a, matric- a matriculant's room and boil water in the kettle so that you can do a vascom wash Don't because if they hear any sounds if they hear any sounds you're in for it the savagery mm. you had to the sneak savagery. sneak bath basically yeah now it was crazy yeah. <laughs> that's a pain of course you're paying. That's a of course you're paying. and the thing is essentially and you know what i think also when you tell your parents about these situations that are happening mm. in their mind they feel like this is a small trade-off for yes. the quality of education you're getting mm. and then you take a step back and you're like but the south african syllabus isn't that great your mm. class mark benchmark is at 30 percent it's fine. why mm. like mm. And, and 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 you can literally think to yourself okay what did i actually learn in those three years or five years in that system mm. that i couldn't have gotten off the internet like 
there's absolutely nothing. Honestly. I mm. think also the, the thing with our parents is that they had it hard. You know? They did. Mm. For, for some part, my father, he was born, raised up until I think 13 years old in Bloemfontein. So he's just like, my girl, you have it easy. Mm. You have it nice. You don't know struggle. You don't know racism. Mm-hmm. And where I am, and I'm like, I, I beg to differ. Yeah. But so for him, he obviously, like you're saying, DJ, that he's just like the quality of your education, ways to perceive like the little struggles that you're going through right now. Like just mm. stop being a baby about it. Just go. If you guys are all smelling together, it's okay. Uh. <laughs> Don't be like, oh, she smells or she's nasty. Mm. Like, you're in it together. So I think it, we just also have to like take into account that they just they actually cannot understand because yeah. they lived through way worse times than mm. we. Yeah, and I think okay. yeah, and I think that that was the case with my parents because I'd tell I'd go home and be like, "Hi, hey, Mama." Today yeah, I almost got into it. I almost got into into trouble. <laughs> I almost got into trouble for using the grade eight A bathroom instead of the grade eight E bathroom. You know, like I tell her stuff like that because there were actually signs and you had to use your grades or your classes toilets, and she'd just be like, "How one now? Tolela toilet? I mean, sanaji. <laughs> just hold it in, girl." I was like, "But it's actually serious, though, guys, because those are the." Things systematically in place that we have to literally question yeah you're like but from the that's little, weird the yeah. Mm. And it's things. yeah and like it's the small things mm. Mm. and it now is, it is, it is, mm. it is. and now you go through this brainwashing of like high school or primary school and you get to varsity like for me get to varsity and my roommate is a white girl who's originally from netherlands I was I was oh, shook. <laughs> Guys, I was just like may, maybe they thought I was Senate and not Senate. Yeah. There was a there was a problem here. But like it was it was such a culture shock because I was like, did they read are they really allowing me to be in the same room as a Caucasian girl, you know? Yeah. And from then that's when I started realizing that you know what? All those things that I was questioning, I was actually in the right mind because it was all wrong. So, mm. Mm, so now I wanna understand you guys experienced because i believe you all went to like international schools i went to um, a south african university and honestly they i think they tried coming from a place that was like horrible they really tried to like have that equality blanket and you know we were all kids you know it wasn't so much of okay i'm a black i'm black or i'm white or i'm from wherever but now how is it for you guys coming from schools where you were always reminded that you're too black and now you're in international schools where I'm guessing the climate is somewhat different. So how was the experience for you? Okay, so um, I was kind of brainstorming a little earlier on in the week. I was trying to think to myself, I was like, hmm, what am I going to say about certain points? And then um, Same. I asked, <laughs> I asked someone and I was like, oh, what experiences did we go through, you know, in uni? And then she mentioned that when we were here, we were reminded so hard that we are, we're black, we're less than. Mm. And then when I got to the U.S., I went to school in Oklahoma. And Mm -hmm. that is, you know, that is the hood, baby girl. Okay. And then when I got there... The fact that I was now African and not African American mm. gave me somewhat of an advantage in the sense that I'm not considered a thug, or, or even my other, you know, more so the guys mm. were not considered thugs because now they fear the African American dudes mm-hmm. more than they do the Someone African from Africa. people, and hey. then that sort of like gave me this sort of advantage, even you know, walking around. Of course, if they're not going to look at you, but you can spot an African on, on the coast. Mm. <laughs> but you know, it's like you're walking around in the daytime and then they see like, oh, Africans immediately, they're like, okay, international student, she's here to get her degree or whatever, get the hell out. Yeah. That's that. They, mm. They're not thinking, okay, this is a delinquent here to mess things up. But if I was an American, mm-hmm. 
they might think that they would start having sort of different views on me. They would always just kind of want to know more about, you know, about, I, I was going to say where in Africa you're from, but they actually don't really care because they're just like, yeah. It's one Africa. Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Africa. But yeah, it, it, there is somewhat of an advantage then when you get to to the U.S. in particular of being an African student versus being African American. Mm-hmm. And I don't know to be if you if you. Do you know what's interesting is that okay, I hear your perspective, but I've also heard a different perspective. But I think it's because now you're more coming from the idea of how white people are viewing you. They're not yes. seeing you as a danger. But the perspective from that I've heard with mm-hmm. somebody that went to Oklahoma University with you, mm-hmm. now coming from African-Americans themselves, mm-hmm. with absolute, you know, I think it's, it's, it's that feeling that you want to look down on somebody else so because you are already so low in this they, world of so like I'd heard stories about how she was asked if she had AIDS, oh. and I was like, "Yes!" Like, and I could I couldn't believe it. And mm. it's that thing where you want to make somebody else feel like, I guess, trivial or whatever. I don't know what word to use. Yeah, you are you are a target in that. Yeah, society. So I I took it as okay. You know what? These people just want to feel at least above someone which hey, is going to be yeah. mm. your own fellow sisters and brothers from africa yeah. yeah which is i mean obviously that perspective needs to change and i guess it's going to take a while but like it's it, that's so offensive like it is, it is. Have aids yeah it is I, I mm. yeah. the worst thing that i was okay it's not even guys you know for me i think i had a trevor noah experience mm. like, <laughs> where i came there and I never really experienced because also I was in Florida. Mm. Um, and I feel like Florida and Oklahoma. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> those two are besties, but like yeah, I, I was more in Sarasota, which it's not I don't I don't even know what I don't wanna use the wrong words. I've heard but, I've so, heard Florida's yeah. very ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it's the pit, so... They have some... You know what Florida is? goes this way. America goes this way. Florida, like, oh, yes, there's a lot of, like, trailer, trailer vibes. Trailer a, man, a man, a white man who was on crack ate another man's face. <laughs> <laughs> and these, are, these are actual stories. And, but anyways, um, oh, wow. for me, when I was there, I, I wouldn't say I experienced racism it was more so mm-hmm. things like um first of all p- most people thought i was mexican so that's why i'm <laughs> going back to trevor noah and mm-hmm. that you know now i'm here but what i did like though is that unlike being at home where i never felt that i was like proper black mm-hmm. when i was in the u.s mm-hmm. i enjoyed that so much you were black for once like my roommate Brianna, who both her parents are black, her and I were now all of a sudden in the You're same black. circle. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I enjoyed that. But then when I came back here, it bit me in the ass because I was still there where I am. You know what I mean? Mm. And then I I'm here, black. And I remember making a comment and I was like, black people, yo. Came up, came up <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Bitch, what you mean, black people? Who the fuck are you? Mm. Sort of definition. And that's when I was like, oh shit! Like, I actually yeah. cannot speak yeah. in that way. Now you ha- now you have to take the colored brown. box and not the black box. Mm. Mm. But like when I was in the US, basically, I think maybe I was the yeah, one but- asked if I played the drums. Like, you know, those types of stupid like, oh, do you have pet lines? And I like, something that they see on TV, so they're like, they want to just remove or like play with it and like it's mm. like it's dumb Very. yeah yeah it's dumb but, but, yeah. but so here back home you have to you can't have a mixed race experience it's you're mixed race you're not black you're not white you have to identify as mixed race mm. the layer of mixed race and that's okay. so crazy I'm, I'm, I'm because crazy. which yeah. 
that which, 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 which you're not at it, all i literally know abs- i know nothing about the culture i literally like nothing <laughs> yeah so, mm. yeah but otherwise i'm not black i'm obviously not white i'm colored but i'm not <laughs> you know the crazy thing also have to interrupt you is just because i think we've known you forever mm. when i look at you i see i'm blacker than you actually yeah but... exactly Dog. and then i, I think the example of the time where you came to my house a few months ago and you walked into the house and you're laughing because you said my god couldn't believe that you spoke to him in so and in my head it's just so hard to understand because i'm like what do you mean what speaks to like why else would she be speaking? Country. All, all country. You just could not. Yes, that's that's my, it. my that's my common experience actually. Like yeah. when I go to like a restaurant or whatever at home, obviously nobody ever assumes that I know. And most of the time I'm there, and I, the conversation is about. Okay, let me not say most of the time, but mm. <clears throat> some of the time the conversation is about me, and I'm just there listening, and I love <laughs> listening to the like you know things that they say. The whole, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but the thing is, with Lesotho, it's now a whole other ball game. I'm not coloured. Now, see the. Aren't you like Asian? I'm neither. Surely, it's like screwed me up mentally somehow. <laughs> it's like a, an effect on you as a person. Mm. But when it comes to Lesotho, it's one of two things. It's either kill China. <laughs> Or which is like a white person, yeah. and <clears throat> I think for me it was the most hectic when I would visit my grandma, who is in Kuti. Now I'm in Kuti, and like these are just to give context to people that don't know what Kuti is. But like mm-hmm. this is now the village Lesotho. I've never seen a white person in my entire life. That's the context. So when I was there, I've I've always been a freak show. I'm literally a freak show because I'm this person who is super light skinned mm. and her hair is different. Mm. But somehow this bitch can speak what we're speaking. Hey, so like, it's like a complete <laughs> mind. Mm. Like it's it's trippy as hell. Yeah. So yeah, to just have to experience all of those different. Um, perceptions of who i am mm. and who i actually am i'm here to find out what it's actually done to me mentally i actually don't know mm-hmm. but yeah mm-hmm. but i i find that so weird Hoba Lesotho. we have uh let's say people of middle eastern heritage who have um let me say um two three generations before the great grandparents moved there but we're so think about so even though Mm. derogatory we refer to them as makula they're not yeah. necessarily indians they mm. are from pakistan they are from jordan yeah. but but so to just play with me and it's so easy for konaba so to just accept them and not see them as a freak show but all of a sudden mm. it's like because even if you think of places like my thing my thing is like the wildest place where there's every race <laughs> <laughs> There's everything. Uh, it's just everything in there, mm-hmm. and you think to yourself, there everything just flies. Like, but uh, like a Chinese person was a so too bad. It's, it's not an anomaly. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's why I find it so weird that in, it, that's the thing. It's like, but there's certain areas where 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 you think to yourself it shouldn't be, you know, mm. something new, especially yeah. in the so too. Mm. And also another thing, because but so we're so welcoming such welcoming people we're not like oh you are other therefore mm. we're going to identify mm. you as other or separate you as other you mm. Know? Mm. i agree mm. yeah Sorry. and for you dinja how's how's your varsity experience in all these different countries Ooh, i've been like i've been in school for a hundred thousand years <laughs> <laughs> stay <laughs> there stay <laughs> there <laughs> i'm a professional student i'm a professional student <laughs> <laughs> Malaysia, it was a lot of 
people, black people, let me say Botswana have been there before. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a shock to see uh, an influx of, let's say, black people, especially from Africa. Yeah. So, but the, the, the what, what I hated was that um, there's no distinction between our nationality. So if you're black, mm-hmm. you're Nigerian. And we all know what kind of reputation Nigerians have across yeah. the world. Oh, wow. And weirdly enough, um, me, me being a bit lighter than other people in complexion mm-hmm. was treated differently from, let's say, my, my, my dog friends. It's like, Bailey, oh, you're not like the other blacks, or you're not like the other Africans. Oh, my God. Mm. Yes. Oh. But but I, I am. am. I am. Oh, you're not like the other blacks. They, they mean you are not Nigerian. You are not loud. You are not mm. rash in how you speak. Mm. You are not rash in how you express yourself. Um, and they'll even go in so much detail as to even talk about your features that, oh, mm. um, your, your nose is not that wide, or oh your lips goodness. are not that big, or your stature is not that masculine. Mm. And I would think to myself, are you seriously in the calmest of voices saying this to me as a mm. black person? Even mm. though Nigerians do have their own reputation, sadly, of, of you know, running scams or, or being rude or whatnot. They're yeah. still African. That person is just, just as black as I am, you know. And I think mm. to myself, and, and it got, but it got to a point where even amongst, let me say, the black people abroad, we separated ourselves. Okay. Other Africans separated themselves from East Africans, from mm. from West Africans, because sure. of the simply based off the reputation that West Africans had mm. of, of you know running drugs through clubs, uh, yeah. trafficking girls, and and that lifestyle. Because and the thing is, um when when Malaysians, because I care about now they have three races. They have Chinese Malaysians, they have Indian Malaysians, yeah. and then they have Malays. Oh, wow. So, mm-hmm. okay, let's say the Malays really now are, are the most racist. You mm. think, maybe let's say the Chinese thinking, I've never seen a black person before, or let's say, but the Indians, I mean, half of them look like us sometimes. Yeah. But oh, yeah. they also have that complex of the superiority complex of, oh, I'm Indian, but I'm like, but you brown though like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're not you, gonna you have this like conversation like, yeah exactly so, mm. so, so, I, think so, I think we were saying of like now there's all of a sudden these other black people that are lower than us mm. yeah 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 so so i think for me um that's those were the only bad experiences of just being lapped around into your black person your african your bad and it got to a point, I remember the discrimination was so bad. Finding an apartment. Oh, I remember the one time yeah. I nearly actually cried. No. And I thought to myself, what the fuck am I doing here? I would never experience this at home. Like, no. never. Mm-hmm. Imagine you call an agent, whatever you go to whatever website, they say the property is available, you, you, you submit an inquiry, they'll be like, yeah, I can take you for a viewing. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, uh, just give me your details. Any Taba, your name, number, address, no. nationality. Anywhere from Africa, they don't care which part of Africa you're from. Mm. All of a sudden, the apartment is not available. Or the landlord is feeling uncomfortable renting it to an African because you guys are loud, you host parties, wow. you trash the place, uh, you have friends <laughs> yeah. over, this, that, and the other. Mm. And I remember at this time... <laughs> It was the first, it was, it was, it, the most difficult time was when I actually was moving from one city to another. So it's like moving from, mm-hmm. from Joburg to Pretoria mm-hmm. because I had finished my marketing degree in 2016 and then I was going to start the law in 2017. Mm-hmm. So, it, so getting a new apartment, I remember, um, cause I was still working at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I had to literally ask one of my late friends to get a contact. Um, one, a real estate agent, someone to just find me an apartment. Literally, five options were all of a sudden available. Mm-hmm. And for wow. them, they didn't even put it as like a, a, an alias to say they're going to rent it instead. I'm going to say, no, they literally say, just, they have to say, no, this is, um, she's a great colleague. Um, she's not like all the other black people. Oh my God. She's, not <laughs> she's not messy. She doesn't host parties. Mm-hmm. She's not going to be having, say, um, Nigerians, and I thought to myself, 
like i can't believe i have to come down to this level mm. just for me to find decent accommodation because of this color of my skin that that is not perceived by reputation that i have nothing to do with mm. and from that experience only in malaysia did i have a disdain for nigerians mm. in that in that context because i felt like i'm being punished for everyone else's indiscretions and i'm not being differentiated and 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 there was a lot of hostility and a lot of um anger um in me regarding that because it was based on personal experiences i understand if let's say you you have so, sort of like an impression of of someone but you don't act on it but then when 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 it impacts you personally you all of a sudden it's like wait what's going on who mm. like why is this happening to me or is it or that's when you realize no you're black like you are black they don't care if you're light skin black dark skin black you're black like all of us black yeah. so it's like all of a sudden that's where you have to like take your privilege and say oh shit is this what other people of darker skin tones yeah. experience or is this what other african people experience because there's no there's no um concessions to say oh no you're light skin you're from the city you are calm you're this you that mm. and but we're going to give you preferential treatment which shouldn't even be the case which shouldn't have been an expectation yeah. from me at all because I'm a black person but that's literally the reality and that is something that obviously continues to this day mm. Even I have been through this. I remember when I also wanted to get an apartment in uh, Paris. Uh when I set up my Airbnb account, I was like, "Oh damn." You know, I was getting a lot of rejections and it was just my face on the picture and I was like, yeah. "I'm cute. What Maybe do you if mean?" I put a picture of me and my, one of my friends uh who's a white girl. Mm. Maybe then I'll start, you know, getting some options. People will write back and lo and behold, they did. But now, I think to myself, the fact that we go through those measures and we we are willingly, you know, perpetuating the problem, should we as black people there, therefore be like, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to change my picture and put this white girl, or I'm not going to ask this. Yeah, but then you don't get accommodation. So now yeah. what? That's the thing. You that's see, the, that's thing. the problem. It's like, we, it's just like, how do we stop? What can we do then to mm. stop this type of from continuing because we know that if we don't do it, we're fucked. But if we do do it, we're just adding or adding fuel to the fire. So, mm. like, that, what do you do? What do we do with black people in this situation? Mm. Like, how do we help mm. ourselves? Yeah. And I think what what Debello mentioned earlier on was really important. Um, Hannah Buahori, when she was younger, she would see the way people treated her mom and her sister, and that it was so wrong. And you know what I mean. And that reminded me of when, you know, when um, George Floyd, the whole George Floyd thing, when it happened and people were posting black um, pictures on their Instagram, you know. And for me, that's when I truly understood, oh, you know what? It is so important for somebody to be anti-racist and not just be silent. You don't have to you don't have to like actually go and post a black picture on your Instagram. But you have to say something. To actively, yeah. Yes, you have to say something. Yeah, 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 because, yeah, yeah. like we've been saying all along, the norm is something that we were not we, we, we were not included when it was decided on. Like when yeah. when boarding school was like, okay, you're gonna wake up at six a.m. and six fifteen, you should be having breakfast. We were not included in that conversation. So many things we were not included. So the norm is that we're not included. For you as as a white person or as somebody that is privileged, you need to stand up and be, you know, like actively against yeah. the system for me to be like, okay, mm-hmm. yes. I don't want you to give me that, oh, no, she's one of the good blacks or, oh, no, mm-hmm. so not just fine. Oh, God, guys, no, I don't I've, want I've that. I've also experienced that. <laughs> yeah? I've also experienced that. Where, um, sorry, but where... Like one of my friends in university, mm. she was a really good friend of mine, which is why then it becomes such a, you know, but mm. this one time we were having dinner, it was me, her, and Brie. So Brie and I in the US, niggas. Yeah, you black. <laughs> and who this to us, Brie and myself, she's like, 
um, well, you know, can you guys aren't like the other black people. You know, it only, you know, I hate hate reactions because yes. I wish for God in that moment mm. I was fucking enlightened mm. and I understood that this was wrong so I could check her in that moment. But I it, it only hit me literally, I think, a couple of years later. Yeah. And and in my head now when I then thought about actually not a couple not a couple of years, a couple of months later when we were graduating. Um, and I just thought about how, okay, so if I were to put my mom here and my sister here, which are the two people that I value the most in the world, are you going to be like, mm, them. Join the party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, no, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, a result. I'm a result of these two people. Mm. So you cannot come to me and say you're not like the other black peeps. And it really honestly same thing. It's like her mom, her I mean her entire family is like, so are you going to not accept the rest of my family? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And both mm. and I are like light skinned. Mm. So again it comes down to the most superficial thing in the world, which is yeah. mm. speaking of that, I saw an Instagram post today, a meme about how I don't understand how you're racist when you have acne because you're wearing <laughs> Please say that again. I missed half of that. It's not, I don't know if I'm going to have the same energy. But anyways, it was like, first of all, you have acne and you should be worrying about your own damn skin. Before oh, before you be a racist. <laughs> Like first of all, yeah, your skin, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. No, yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy, and it, it 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 honestly it honestly breaks my heart. And only now do I really realize how important it is for someone to be anti-racist. You know, like strongly mm-hmm. be against racism. You know, and because of that, I started to think, okay, what can people do? Or what can, what can white people do to learn about racism to try and become anti-racist type of thing? And mm-hmm. then I was thinking about all these shows. And oh yeah, yeah, actually on that, ne? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you guys know the show Dear White People. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> one of the directors or creators, Simeon, he was on an interview and he was saying that it is so it is so heartbreaking that we have to find characters to play these roles just to educate people about our everyday life mm. and we're also because even even in those characters we're not showing them the full picture it's just yeah. snippets because our lives are so hectic and so heartbreaking we are trying to dumb it down so that you understand that you know what shooting a black man a black on unarm, unarmed man who may be disabled maybe whatever the situation, whatever condition or whatever, it is so heartbreaking. You have to sit that we, we have to put you, we have to sit you down and be like, you know what, come and watch this documentary, come and watch when they see us, go watch dear white people for you to understand, oh, okay, you know what? Oh shit, this is wrong. And at the end of the day, I feel like it has to be, it has to be a thing of if you're human, you should not be treated like that. Yeah. You don't have to throw in, you know, your race and your what and your what. But now it has to be in the conversation because what seems to be fueling these people is that, um, yeah, you don't look like me. You don't act like me. So because of that, I am going to treat you like an animal. I'm going to ask you if you have AIDS because you're black. I'm going to ask you if you have Corona because you're Chinese. You know what I mean? It's, it's, (laughs) It's just so crazy. And I think... Because as as hum as humans we, we are we are dumb. I think a yeah. good a good place to start could be with books and films and movies that educate these people. Because now you have their attention and they're like, okay, let me listen. And yeah. And, and another important thing is, it shouldn't be our burden. It mm. shouldn't have to be on me to teach you what you should. Be knowing inherently mm. you and I were born at the same time so you can't say you were oblivious to 
the privilege. I shouldn't have to direct you in which direct, like, which way to, which books to read, which movies to to watch, which mm. um things to be sort of like aware of. Yes. And I remember saying this um a couple of weeks ago uh, to a friend that it's not that white people are not aware of their privilege; they are very aware. And the fact that they are unwilling to let go of it is the exact confirmation that you need to know that they know what it is they'd be giving up uh-huh. because if they weren't they'd easily give it yeah, up they'd be like oh, okay well what is it that that i can do or what is it that, that i'm benefiting from that mm-hmm. can easily be allocated to you or that could sort of level out the playing field mm-hmm. and then when they come to that realization all of a sudden it's apprehensive like oh no but um this was already um, an opportunity. I got this job because my uncle's this um, owns the company, or I got this internship because this, that, and the other, or the fact that I can afford a house fresh out of college because my parents saved up. Your parents were able to save up mm. because they had different access to funds and resources. Mm-hmm. Your parents were able to, when you get married, you get a house. You get a car, you get a startup fund for you and your new wife or whatever, your new family to live in this neighborhood, to have this job, to all those things mm. when you realize that uh, we're already like paved a way for you to have that life, all of a sudden it's like, no, I don't want to let it go. Like, because it, they'll, they'll all of a sudden get angry, like, why is there, why is it that, um, for black people to get into university, your pass mark has to be only 70%, but a white person is expected um, to get, I don't know, 90% for certain grades Mm -hmm. or or whatnot, anything to yourself. This is something that's just so far back that Mm. we are trying to, even if it's so small, to incrementally make a difference or to try and level out that playing field. And the fact that you think you should be performing at a level of 70% compared mm-hmm. to a person who probably went to a really disadvantaged school, didn't have the basic resources, books, labs, um, sports field, um, social events, um, and all of that that, mm. that puts you here. And, and you think to yourself, even like the things that charge your, your career path mm. or your access to certain things would be if, let's say, uh, UCT says it has... 30 feeder schools and most 30 feeder schools are model c and private schools and you think to yourself well what about all the other schools because mm. it's like well if i didn't go to crawford if i didn't go to kersney if i didn't go to um uh you know like all these like, uh historically white schools that are either private or model c mm-hmm. i wouldn't have had the same education in order to be prepared for those exams in order to get access to that institution to to study this and that and the other mm. and those are things people don't don't want to talk about yeah so now all of a sudden even things like um i remember south africa um a few years back the fees must fall um uh uh protests and 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 Whoa. demonstrations other people had the, the the nerve to say, "Oh no!" But if you can't afford to go there, go you to be a, a different one. And I thought to myself, <laughs> the audacity! The audacity! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to say that just because I can't afford, therefore I shouldn't even get access to it. The reason I can't afford is because you and your great grandfathers mm-hmm. robbed me yep. of land and resources and opportunities i am stuck in this circle because of my circumstances yes. and there's nothing i can do other than rely on government grants and scholarship and bursaries i can be a top performer but is that going to always put me through through uh, full tuition textbooks um living expenses not necessarily so if you think to yourself yeah. it's okay to say no you shouldn't apply because you can't afford like like what is that mm. and and the, and 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 they're so brazen when they express these views like mm. and it's even today it's like you have the audacity to say things like that to my face in today's climate like that's what mm. tells me that we are so far we mm. are really so oh, yeah. far from from where we think we, we'd like to be as a society yes and, and that I is what i don't, I don't, I don't mm. I could, you know go to every single white person who does who claims to not understand or have has different views or all lives matter type of people and ask them if truly in their heart of hearts they believe in what they're saying 
or is it just a matter of them not wanting the system to change so they can perpetually stay in power? Mm -hmm. Because it, it makes no sense to me how something as basic as not understanding that you already have a head start mm. makes no sense to someone. Well, I think you can possibly think that you and I are in the same position. See, I think when when someone is living in a fantasy world, I think you just have maybe this notion, besides the people who know that they can take advantage of it, mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot of white people who live in this fantasy world where you know, it would feel too guilty if you knew that everybody else isn't living in that fantasy world with you. Like, yeah. you... Because, I mean, like, if you knew that you had all the advantage in the world and life is amazing, opportunities, blah, 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 you would feel, well, if you have a heart, you would feel yeah. bad if you knew that the other 90-something percent of the world is not where you are. Mm. So... I think you then begin to convince yourself that no, this thing it's not real. Like mm. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Which is so nonsensical. Mm. Like, it exhausts me, you know what I'm saying? And I know that like you're saying you have to be anti racist, you have to be vocal about yeah, it. Yeah. 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 That's the right is, but that's, I think I, at the same time we also need to be cautious of the fact that these things are actually emotionally draining. Mm. They are emotionally taxing. It is emotionally taxing to be being made aware of these things that take place in the world every single day and to have a voice about each and every single one of them. That's true. Because for me, mm. I know I know there's so much more that I have to say about mm. everything that I see. But the minute like for example when the Brianna Taylor um story came out and <laughs> When it started gaining traction and it was a big thing in the world. I remember there was one day I was at work and I think I went through one of the files that had about 300 plus pictures of the crime scene. And when I tell you, I literally almost wanted to go to my boss and be like, I actually have to go home. And the world outside is expecting me to have an opinion about it, to say something, to be posting it. And I actually was so tired because it just did not make sense to me how these people are, are still out there living their lives and mm. are not being held accountable. And it's just, like, it is our duty as black people to, you know, fight for ourselves, but it's also so difficult to carry the burden of every single mm. injustice in the world that takes place yeah. for mm. our and what, people. And what you're saying, T, is so important. It is so important because in as much as I would like to see people react and be like you know what this is wrong i also wanted to come from a place where they feel oh my gosh another human being is being treated like this because now it's so easy it's so easy for someone to post hashtag black lives matter and then go back to that mansion where they're treating whoever is working there as if they're trash you know so it's 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 i don't know how to put it but i really wish everyone was that weak and that heartbroken when it came to oh. reading up about all of this shit to be like, oh my gosh, oh. this is what they did to this human being, you know? Oh. And it's, 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 it's tiring, like you're saying, dog. It's tiring, oh. and I understand the feeling of, you know what, I just want to switch off, switch off my social media because it's too much to take. And I, I wish all of us felt that way. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, that ability to be empathetic to, to a basic level of just being human, seeing the humanity in another person, seeing the benevolence in another person. Mm. White people are very capable of doing that. If you think about the Holocaust, mm. when you say six million Jews were murdered brutally in gas chambers, it's not forget about it. It's not it happened 400 years ago. Mm. It's not, you didn't experience it. It's not, it's, it's never just brushed off. It's a moment of pause. It's a triggering thing. It's something just, that's just so jarring. It's yeah. like, never forget. Yes. And you think to yourself, if you're capable of acknowledging someone's humanity, regardless of, of what race they're from, because mm. if you think to yourself, well, 
they they weren't American, but the whole world is able to sympathize mm. to to that level, then it's fine. But the minute it's it's we talk about slavery, the minute we talk about racism yeah, okay. against black and brown people, mm. it's like yeah, but you're not making you're making such a big deal out of it. Get over yeah, it. You no, know, mm. get over it. And and you think to yourself. Okay, well, because because I think had that not happened, then we'd say, you know, maybe historically, why people don't just don't have the ability to to sympathize with other yeah. humans that 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 um, have experienced atrocities in their lifetime. Mm. But the fact that this happened just in 1945, mm. just, yeah. just in 1945, and they're they're able to say, oh, okay, never forget, um, let's always sympathize, and we know more about the Holocaust than we do about slavery. Mm. We know more about the Holocaust than we do apartheid. We know about more about the Holocaust and what's happening in Palestine. And you think to yourself, why is that? Mm. Why is it that certain issues or certain atrocities, even mm. the way the media covers recent events, right? Mm. Or they'll be like, oh no, there's a there's a explosion in Yemen. It's going to be just an update. But God forbid, there's one shootout in in, in Harris. Mm. The whole world stop. Change your profile pictures. Change your, change your 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 social media. Mm. Everyone just has to you know, take a step and focus on this because all of a sudden this tragedy has more importance or more bearing on the world than everything else. Yes. And you yeah. think to yourself, like, and even with America, I think to myself, like, like white cops or white people do not give a fuck about black people. Like they've shown us that. Like it's not even I'm trying to. I'm trying to show you that I'm a human. I'm trying to show you the, the, the humanity in me. I, for them, it's like, I know you're human, but mm. I don't give a fuck. Mm. So your life to me doesn't matter. Like, your life to me is just sensible. So whether you are in a church, whether you are in the mall, whether you are walking down the street, whether you are a woman, whether you are a kid, whether you are a man, I don't care. I'm going mm. to just obliterate your life like i really don't care yeah and that reminds me of a colleague of mine um she's she's jewish and this one time we were playing 30 seconds and on the card i think it was something about nazi what what and she couldn't she couldn't say she she she, she couldn't play like like that word she didn't want to give clues and and she couldn't say the actual word because she was like it's against everything i believe in you know and that same person, she's the same person that after watching, I don't know if you guys have seen the Netflix episode um, on, what's that show called? The World's Toughest Prisons. There's a Lesotho episode on that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, always hear, I, I always hear about it. You need yeah. to watch that. And I she's, watched it. Yeah, yeah. she's the same oh, person. What does it cover? Um, it, Lesotho Prison. You know that prison by, the, by Pioneer Mall? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, so the episode is about um, how a lot, majority of the prisoners there, they have this mentality that rape is not a serious crime type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, oh my God. So, so to go back to my colleague, um, what I wanted to say is that she is, she is very, she's still very touched by the Holocaust. And she's the same person that will come to me and be like, yo, Sanate, I watched this episode and I know you're from Lesotho. How does it make you feel? Like, tell me about it, you know? Like, she's, she's that person that goes into every situation with, a, with, with the assumption that she doesn't know anything. And I feel mm-hmm. like that is, what, that is how I wish white pe- more white people were like. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. walk, into the, walk into the situation assuming that, you know what, I don't know anything. Because honestly, you do not know my experience. The same way I cannot go to a developer and be like, just because you're mixed race or because you are light skinned, you have it easier than me. No, mm. what she's going through is totally different to what different I am going through, you know. So I need to re- give her that much respect to be like, you know what, if you're hurt or if you're not OK, let me shut up and listen to you. And I feel like that is that is like the one thing that that's like the first step into like, you know, learning about each other and yeah. learning to appreciate one another shut the fuck up and assume you don't know anything because you actually don't know anything yes. it's all about the journey ain't nothing changed but the weather